Hey guys, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and run through the collusion or the occlusion culling system that I wrote up for you, um, us. Uh, right quick, let you guys know how to set it up because there is just a little bit of setup that we have to do for it. Um, so first off, we have um, a special script you guys need to put because it works using these nice um, areas that we already created earlier uh, in the singular game objects because these things can easily be removed and um, you know done and you can see kind of down um, if you do that in your scene that it, the unity kind of does some uh, batch processing um, when it does that um, but basically what you guys have to do is just uh, select the um, the game object that holds all of your scene files in it and, and then attach a script called the occlusion reference generator um, basically you can just go to add component scripts occlusion reference generator and what you'll the only thing you'll have to do for that is make sure that in the drop down menu that's associated um, where it says area owner you select your name because that's going to go ahead and let the occlusion calling system know that that area is your area and we're really going to use that extensively in the occlusion calling system for getting this to work so um, basically as far as getting this um, to actually know when it needs to go back and forth and do things I created a trigger a lot like uh, my nice little event triggers that I have going on here and basically if you just go in the uh, global prefabs folder uh, inside that there's a folder called occlusion culling and then inside that there's a game object called uh, occlusion zone which is basically just a game object that you can uh, a prefab that you can drag and drop in and um, basically it, it works off uh, triggers so if you drag one in the scene um, it just kind of pops in there with a box collider um, you may need to adjust the box collider so that way it kind of fits the area that you're working with um, so like this in this case um, don't worry this nice little yellow box will actually disable itself um, when you play it's just there so that way you can see them in uh, the scene um, and know where they are and select them easily if you need to but um, what you'll see when you do this is that the object has a script attached to it called occlusion trigger and what it just has is a, a list of booleans uh, basically things that you can check mark on or off and basically that's just a list of all the levels that should be rendered when you're at that point in the game so for instance here we're right next we're in my level but we're next to Gilbert's so obviously the player's not going to be able to need to see anything to do with Dan's level or Mike's level or Carter's level so I would uncheck everything but Gilbert's little check mark and my little check mark because at where we are at that point those are the only two levels we need to see um, however though once you get like actually inside my lab and we drop another one in there maybe increase the uh, the box a little bit bring it a little closer to the door so that way it triggers once they get in um, then um, obviously we're able to see our level and we can even see a little bit of Carter's level once you get to the back so my and Carter's level needs to stay active but we can realistically get rid of Dan's, Mike's and Gilbert's um, if you feel a little uneasy about that um, like one thing I might do is since it really just kinda matters up here I might just bring this back so that um, the levels around them or you know what let's just even bring it just a little bit here um, yeah you know what because it might it's probably gonna require a little bit of testing because all I'm worried about right now is once they get here they're able to see the door to Gilbert's area so we do need to make sure that they see it a little bit before here so maybe I'll actually just drag this in and then set this a little farther in and then maybe just like dramatically increase 
the size of this. Yeah, something like that might work. So once they enter the lab, um, we no longer need to see Gilbert, but as soon as they pop out of the lab, um, we know we have to uh, turn Gilbert stuff back on. Now the beauty of this is that, uh, especially with all the lights and sounds and things of that nature, Unity doesn't bother putting any resources into rendering that stuff when they're not active. But it does still take up memory as far as RAM, so that means it's very, very quick to um, make them seen and not seen. So that's really just going to be the easiest way for us to do this. Um, the other thing is, is for this to work, you really kind of need to have the occlusion zones outside of your area. Um, but they can be inside of your area, provided that the person um, at whose area is adjacent to you has set them upright. Um, so there shouldn't be that much of a problem. But um, yeah, that's pretty much just the way it works. If you have any problems, uh, let me know. So that way I can get them uh, fixed for you as soon as possible. Um, other than that, it's a pretty simple system and uh, just implement it as soon as you can because if someone doesn't have it implemented and we go to build the game once we jump in there if someone doesn't have it it's going to give us a null pointer error and the game's going to break so just please uh, implement this as soon as possible and let me know if you have any questions